Who was a game that started on the kitchen table. It was a big piece of paper, it was magazines chopped up, it was ideas about how we would use questioning skills, what curiosity we'd have there, what critical thinking we'd need, how we could incorporate our tadeo. So Mrs Campbell one day showed us the little draft game she made and then when we had finished it she thought it would be fun if we did it for real. I dived into the archives of our school, which is 150 years old, and pulled out a photo from 1983. And in that photo was a very familiar face to me. I threw the little hook in there and said, I know something about this teacher. And that's all I gave them. I didn't tell them what I knew. And from then on, they had to drive it. So we each designated a person, and that person, um, you have to try and find information. The first level was to get a name. Uh, the second level was to get a location, could we find out where they were. The third level was to actually get a response. And the fourth level was to actually to get a memory, to bring the, the stories of 1983 back to us and to explore what these now 43, 44 year olds remembered of their days at Hutt Central School. They went around the school, they went to the teachers at the school that they knew had been there a long time, they went and asked the office, they got information, they then checked it with another teacher and all of a sudden we had a name and we had a phone number and we had an email address. So they were excited. Miss Gibbons is the teacher of 1983 Room 6 and actually she still works here as a volunteer for Reading for Life. So we invited her in. She gave us a few names. And we had some recorders in the class. We quickly scribbled down what she was saying to us. As a recorder, you had to like listen, but you had to write down all the information at the same time. So that was a bit tricky, but I did it. <laughs> she pointed out a couple in the, in the photo and asked us questions. There were two that looked very similar in their colouring. And the kids decided they thought they were twins because they were brother and sister. And she confirmed that that was the case. However, she didn't know their name. As soon as it went on Facebook, we had the Hutt City Council share it. We had Hutt City Library share it. And so it's just gone wide. Although it started in Team Tahi, it, the whole community seems to be engaging in this, this a curiosity connection game that we're playing. So obviously with the, with the students not being on Facebook, they had to frame up these letters that were very courteous. They used their Te Reo greetings. They were informative and in letting our clients know why they wanted the information. And so these were going out via my email and coming back in. So literally my phone has been going crazy. Most of us went on to Google Docs and tried to create an email or a letter to our client, in my case Jacinta and I've recently gotten a reply and I'm very happy with the result that came out of it. Hamish Drum, he is also in the photo. He is actually number four and he came in to give us a little bit of information. This is the Hamish Drum. <laughs> and he said, hands down, he could almost name everyone in that photo. Well, we still don't know a person's name. So when Miss Gibbons came in, she gave our name as Matthew, and then a girl in that same class texted our teacher. She called him Brad. When Hamish came in, he called him Roger. So we still don't know his name. And we're still playing. We're, we're still finding out about our clients. We're exploring what their stories are, and we're collecting the data, and then the data is really interesting. We want to explore the data further.